wall. Um, this is going to be my first installment, my first video in my essential Fellini log of all his films. All the films, at least, that are included in the essential Fellini criterion uh, box. So the first film is Variety Lights. Um, I'm just going to start off by saying I am going to be, you know, saying spoilers, so if you want to watch the film before you watch this video, click off now, go watch it. Um, but yeah, if you've already seen it or you just want to hear me ramble on, um, you can stick around. I encourage you to. Um, so first... I'm just going to get into some of the history of Variety Lights. Okay, so the history. Um, this film was co-directed. It's Fellini's first film, and it's co-directed by both Fellini and a more established director at the time, Alberto Latuda. Um, it's co-directed and co-written by those two. However, Fellini came up with the idea and most of the story. Um, Latuda gave the co-directing, uh, what's the word? I don't know, but he let him be a co-director as sort of a gift to get his career off the ground. Um, and so, well, this is... Well, Fellini is credited as being his first directorial film. Um, he actually was more in the background and Latuda was more of the real director. And Fellini said about this um, in regards to this film, To tell the truth, Latuda did everything. I just looked on. That's a quote from Fellini. Oh, there's a fly on my foot. A quote from Fellini. So, well, this is Fellini's first directorial debut, I wouldn't really say it's a full Fellini film. We're going to have to wait for the next film to see that, see him solo on his own. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, it is a combination of their uh, directing and writing, so it's still interesting to see where Fellini comes from. Okay, next I'm just going to go over the plot. Um, so Variety Lights is about a variety show troupe, and, uh, this is this troupe of people, they're not famous, they're not wealthy, it's just this group of kind of circus-like people who all dance and do different stuff or different acts. They travel around doing shows, and during this time in Italy, this business was sort of on the decline. Um, so yeah, like I said before, they're not wealthy. Um, one of the characters in this troupe, his name is Checo, and he's sort of the main character, one of the leading characters of this film. And I would describe Checo as self-absorbed. Um, he is just, yeah, all about himself, all about his own success, kind of. He wants to be the star. Um, and Checo is dating another woman in the troupe named Melina. Um, and she is, I think, my favorite character in the film. She's very just, she's a good person. She's one of the good people in this film. Um, and so one time when they're traveling via train to one of their shows, a young aspiring actress and performer gets on their train and what happens is she comes up to Checo who is kind of the leader self-proclaimed leader of the troupe and she tries to weasel her way into the troupe and this sounds great to Checo who is instantly attracted to Liliana but He's only wants her in the troupe, 
because he likes her. And so he tries to kind of, you know, feel her up right away, and Liliana slaps him. And then that makes Checo mad, and Checo says, nope, you're not going to be in this troop. Which is one of the themes of this film, and it's something that still goes on today, where actors or leaders kind of pressure you into doing things with them to give you a part. This can happen with men or women, probably more commonly happens men doing it to women, but you know, you never know. Um, yeah, so he says no, and then they get to their destination, and they don't have the money to buy a cart from the train station to their destination. And so they begin walking, and Liliana also is around, and she buys a cart. And so they're walking, and all of a sudden you see Liliana come from the background, and she lets them all onto the cart, obviously to kind of make them like her and seem helpful. And so from that point forward, she's just kind of rolling with the troop, and people are resisting her dancing. She tells them that she has permission to dance with them, um, which she kind of made up. But people resist that, but then... On the night of the performance, she weasels her way in, and she goes out on stage. And while she's out on stage, oh, I must preface this by saying, before she goes out on stage, the troupe is not doing too well. The audience is not liking the performance. And then she goes out on stage, and she is an attractive woman, and her skirt falls off mid-performance. And the primarily men, male audience, audience likes this. They like this a lot. And so they start cheering, and she becomes the star of this troupe. They do three, maybe more, performances on other nights just because of her, you know, her legs. Um, and this makes the troupe jealous. Everyone kind of wants to be the star and make the most money, but Liliana just comes in off the street and instantly is the star. And that's kind of the jumping off point of the movie. From that point forward, Checo um, dumps Melina, the really nice character who I like, and starts kind of going out with Liliana. And so their troupe gains success, and eventually they're invited to a dinner, this very fancy, nice dinner. I think it's a senator's. A senator invites them to dinner. And this senator also likes Liliana. And so we see this elaborate dinner scene where they're all, this starving group of performers is all at this guy's mansion. And again, we see um, Liliana kind of being hit on by this powerful senator. And... Checo is very jealous when he sees this, and so he tries to call off the little party, and he that they don't end up doing that because they all want the food and wine that the senator is providing them, but he's all jealous, and then we see uh, Liliana kind of is being harassed a little bit by this senator, and Checo doesn't like this, but Melina notices that Checo doesn't like this, and so she starts telling him, like, you know, Liliana's the slut here. She wants to go out with the senator, when actually Liliana doesn't want to go out with the senator and is being pressured by the senator. But anyways, Checo ends up breaking them up. He doesn't want them seeing each other. And so, yeah, there's another part of the theme of just powerful men kind of spending all their, the senator spends all this money on food and wine just to get with Liliana, and it ends up Checo breaks him apart, but that's only because of Checo's own greed, because he wants Liliana. Um, so yeah, after that the troop kind of breaks up, and this is due to the fact that Checo and Melina are no longer together. So they kind of start doing their own things. Melina goes off and does her own shows. And then Checo wants to focus his whole troupe on Liliana. But Liliana 
only really wants to kind of use Checo to build off of and then eventually move past him. Um, so he's just, she uses Checo as a stepping stone, and so she dates Checo for a while, but Checo is half in love with her and half wants to take credit for her success, even though she's kind of just doing her own thing. She doesn't need Checo's help. And so, in the end, Checo builds this troop around her, and as soon as they're about to perform, Liliana says she's leaving the troop because she's been offered a bigger job elsewhere. And this kind of destroys Checo. He knows it's probably what's actually best for her, so he tells her to go, and so she does. And so she goes out and becomes famous doing this. She's a dancer. She's making a lot of money. And in the closing scenes of this film, you see two trains. One is Liliana leaving for, one, for the de debut of one of her shows. And then the other train is um, Checo. And he's on the train with his troop, and since Liliana left, he's convinced Melina to help support this uh, troop, and also come back and join, and they're dating again. So, Checo and Melina are back together, which is great, because Melina's the best. And so, Checo comes over and talks to Liliana on the train, and is basically just like, you know, good luck, and... She's all, Liliana's all happy and is like, you did this for me, when I don't really think Checo did much for her. But, you know. Then Checo goes back on his train, and you see a very similar shot to the beginning of the film, where Checo is sitting next to Melina, they're once again together, and... Alright, so the camera died, and I actually finished the video outside but when I was watching it back, I realized that I forgot to finish what happens at the end of the film. And so, just to sum it up, because it's important to the analysis, um, we see a very similar shot from the beginning of the film of Checo and Melina on the train again, side by side, dating again. And like when Liliana comes into the train, we see a new woman at the end of the film coming to the train, and it gets the viewer wondering, what's Checo going to do? Is he going to do the same thing he did before and pursue that woman and flirt with her and try to get her to join the troop? Or is he going to have learned his lesson? And, you know, I was hoping that he would have learned his lesson. But, no, at the end of the film, Melina leaves to go to the bathroom and Checo begins talking to this new woman. And the cycle is going to repeat again. So, yeah, I just thought I had to say that. I think I talk a little bit about it in the next clip you're about to see. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so unfortunately my camera died, so I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. I believe I was talking about the ending of the film and how I found it unsatisfying, but I mean, it supported the theme of just ego and how people never change and how this guy is just a stuck-up guy. I would have liked to see Checo change in the end, but I mean, the point of the film, I guess, was just that he doesn't change. So, well, it was unsatisfying for me. I understand why they did it. Um, next, I'd like to get into some of the themes of this film. Um... One theme was financing art is difficult. A huge part of this film was just that Checo was always broke and never had enough money for anything, and he had to ask so many people for money. And I think, from what I've heard, this is a, uh, a theme that's pretty common in Fellini's films. Um, and so I'm interested to see how this kind of relatable topic, because, you know, uh, it is true. Everyone says it. Financing art, and specifically movies and film, is 
half of the battle when it comes to making a film. Um, and so we see it here in theater, how it's half of the battle in getting your troop going. And so yeah, I'm interested to see where Fellini goes with that theme again. Another theme is Ego, like I said. Mainly seen in Checo's character, he thinks he's the best, he wants to take credit for everything. Um, and he never changes, even in the end of the film. Um, another theme is sex. He, a lot of the characters are just using the women and complimenting them and giving them things just for sex. Um, yeah, not much more I can say about that one. Um, and then also using people for personal gain. I think Checo and uh, Liliana do this. Checo because he kind of wants to take credit and thinks he's like building up Liliana when Liliana doesn't even really need him that much. And then Liliana because she's kind of using Checo to step up to another level. Um, I think kind of pretending that she is interested in him so that he'll stick around and maybe help finance her for a while. Um, and then love. Um, I see love in this film only really through the character of Melina. She is heartbroken when uh, Checo breaks up with her and then while she's still mad at him throughout the rest of the film, he eventually comes crawling back to her and she forgives him, helps him support his troop, even though the troop, the leader of the troop, is uh, Liliana, who is the one who stole Checo away from her. She still helps finance that, and then when Liliana leaves him, she comes back to the troop and loves Checo again. And so, yeah, love in this film I see through Melina. And then just, last one is just, they never, never learn. Checo never learns. I wish he did, but he doesn't. Um, now just some opinions. I think this is a very good debut film. I know that it's not completely Fellini. It's not just a solely a Fellini film. But I'm sure that there's definitely some consistencies in this film that we're going to see in his next films. And I can't wait to see his actual solo directorial debut. Um, and then, last thing, I was just surprised that there were no dream sequences. When I think of Fellini, I've only seen eight and a half, but when I think of Fellini, I always think like, oh, he's the guy that uses lots of dreams and like imaginary kind of things where the character's mind goes places. None of that in this film, which is probably because he didn't have complete control. And I think the dream stuff kind of maybe starts coming up later in his career. Um, so I'll be interested to see when exactly it does come up. Uh, and then for these other ones, I'll be doing a comparing, uh, like a comparing segment where I talk about it versus his other films. I've only seen eight and a half and I haven't really studied it at all. So I'm not going to compare this to eight and a half right now, but in my next episode, I will compare this to the film I watched in that episode. And so yeah, that's gonna do it for this episode. This has been uh, Essential Fellini, uh, Variety Lights. If you stuck around and watched this, wow. I mean, that's huge. I'm proud of you and I'm very thankful. Thank you. Um, yeah. See you guys next time.